The chamfer command will create beveled edges on objects. You can specify the distance and the angle of those beveled edges as part of the command. To start my chamfer command, I can pick it from the tool panel, enter chamfer at the keyboard or its keyboard alias CHA. I have two ways that I can specify how the chamfer will be created. The first method is using the distances. If I know the distances from the intersection point of this corner, for example, I can set my chamfer using those two distances. The other method is by angle. If I know the distance from the intersection on one leg of the chamfer and I know the angle that needs to be used, then I can use the angle method. When I activate my chamfer command, I can look down here on the command line to see what the current settings are. It's in trim mode, which means that the lines will be trimmed when the chamfer is created. And it's set for distance, with my first distance at 1 and my second distance at 0.5. If I right click the mouse, you can see your options. I'm seeing distance as my method that shows up when I click on the chamfer command. If I use the method option, I could change so that angle would be the first option that would show up when I clicked on the command. But I can switch back and forth by clicking on my options here to change from distance to angle. Right now we're going to look at using angle. And so distance 1 and distance 2 will determine what order I'm going to pick the objects. If distance 1, distance one is 1 inch, and I click on this side of the object, then the next pick is going to represent distance 2. And you can see that the chamfer is created one inch on the first distance, half an inch on the second distance. I'm going to activate my chamfer command again, and this time I want to change the distances. So I'm going to right click, choose dist distance off the option menu, and for my first distance I'm going to specify 0.75 and for my second distance I'm going to specify 0.25 and in this case I want to uh, chamfer a couple of corners so I'm going to right click and choose multiple so I don't have to restart the command so my longer line is going to be this side my shorter line will be this side when I go down here if I want this to be a mirror of that that side I have to choose my longer line and my shorter line and I can right click to end the command. Let's look at how we would use the angle method to specify a chamfer. I'm going to activate the chamfer command. Because my current method is set to distance that's what comes up first so I'm going to right click and change to angle and it wants me to specify the length. In this case it's going to be 1 for the length and then the angle I'll set at 27 degrees. I'm going to uh, create more than one chamfer so I'll right click and choose multiple. Now in this case it's the distance side that I choose first so if I want my chamfer to be cut back one inch on this side I'll choose that side first and then the angle will go in this direction. Down here, same thing. If I want this to be a mirrored corner, then this would be the, the side with the distance, and this would be the side that represents the angle. I'm going to start my chamfer command again, and you'll notice that it still is in method. It's always starting up with the uh, distance. I'm going to change that by choosing method, and I can choose either distance or angle, and I would like to have angle be the startup. So I'm going to end that command and start chamfer again, and now you'll notice I'm starting up in the angle mode, and it's set for 1 inch and 27 degrees. So it remembers the settings that I had put in earlier. Uh, let's look at a situation where I have two lines that don't meet. Um, Actually, the intersection will be projected, the distance measured, and the angle applied. So if I choose this line first, and then I choose this line, you notice that I can create that. Now chamfer also, like fillet, has a, a shift toggle. So if I wanted to 
essentially create a corner that uh, was just an intersection with no chamfer applied to it. I could hold down the shift button uh, while I'm using chamfer and click on the two lines and it will complete that corner with no chamfer applied to it. Now my lines don't have to be at right angles in order to create a chamfer. Here I have two lines that intersect uh, at an angle and if I uh, recall my chamfer command if I wanted my one inch distance to be on this leg and then my angle calculated to meet that I would choose that line first and then that one and the chamfer will be created. Also the lines don't have to intersect. Um, in the case of two lines that don't intersect these lines will be projected to find an intersection point it'll be measured back for the distance and then the angle will be calculated. So if I click this line first that represents the distance this one represents the angle and it creates the chamfer. Now I can also work with polylines and my chamfer command. Here you can see I have a polyline. If I use my chamfer command on a polyline just with a regular command, uh, this would be the distance, this would be the angle, it will chamfer that one intersection. But if I use my chamfer command and right click and say polyline, click on the polyline, it will chamfer each of the segments of my polyline. Now when we create rectangles and polygons, you know that those are created as polylines and you can use your chamfer command with those also. Uh, in this case, I'm going to say chamfer and I'll right click and say polyline and click on my rectangle. Now what you'll notice is that if I have an unequal angle that I'm using for my chamfer, uh, they, aren't, they don't come out as mirrored sides. It applies them counterclockwise as it goes around, uh, choosing the objects. So if you, don't, if you use uneven chamfers, you may get results that uh, uh, are a little bit unexpected.